the truth is that they abused you because they're abusers. In that process, as you continue to recover, you need to learn how to trust your intuition. Hi, this is Jim Brion. Welcome to this YouTube channel where we discuss all things mental health. What the topic is today is something that I deal a lot with many of my clients is, is overcoming abuse from being in a toxic relationship, often something we refer to as narcissistic abuse. I think some people are actually confused by that term and I'm not sure that it's actually the greatest term, but for lack of better words, um, being in a relationship with somebody who's got a pathological form of narcissism. I think many people think that narcissism is just about people who are uh, impressed with themselves and grandiose, that sort of thing. But that doesn't take into account the psychological damage, the emotional manipulation, sometimes physical abuse that happens because a narcissist or toxic personality is really psychologically and emotionally undermining to the people that they live with. Often what happens is the person, the narcissist, externally puts out an image of being like the, the perfect ideal person, yet behind closed doors, they can be just a terror to live with. So overcoming that um, process, once you take yourself out of a toxic relationship like this, there's a process that people have to go through to heal themselves. And I want to kind of run through some of the elements of that, so to speak. I think the first thing that you have to do once you recognize what's happening is you have to acknowledge what happened as abuse. That means you have to take off the rose-colored glasses. You have to actually confront the fact that this person who maybe you love, fell in love with, made a commitment to live with forever, has actually been a really pathological influence in your life recognizing that it's abuse and it's not appropriate. And then you have to start to build boundaries. That's the, the hardest part, I think, for many people, is learning how to develop, communicate, and then maintain boundaries. That is probably a foreign language to many people, but especially around your empathy, because often narcissists and toxic personalities are attracted to somebody with a high level of empathy. And if you're a sensitive person, you have to have boundaries to protect that empathy, not to get rid of it, but to mature it and to protect it. You want to stop all of the what ifs and if only questions, like what if I had just tried a little harder or, or you know, if only this had happened. All of that really is just floating back to the past situations, ruminating on it, and it's bringing you back into a preoccupation with that person. And it's something that you need to stop. So you have to stop asking, why? Why did this happen? Why would he treat me this way? Why would she treat me this way? And realize that some of the effects of gaslighting and people manipulating you emotionally is to get you stuck in your head wondering what I did to bring this on. The truth is that they abused you because they're abusers. That's the reason why. Now, there's always going to be elements that each person, you know, brings to any kind of conflict, but you have to stop asking why and what if. You also have to learn how to embrace your emotions, all of them. You might have to learn to understand them at first. And there's a, a process as you go through this healing and recovery work of reclaiming your identity and taking back your power. This is where I think it's important to recognize the difference between power versus force. What I'm talking about is personal power not power over. That's what you've been subject to in the relationship. You also have to learn how to practice self-compassion. That can be a hard thing for many, many people because most of us were actually never taught how to be compassionate towards ourselves. But there is a process that you can learn so that you can start to create some of that compassion enough to provide for yourself as well as other people. Often we can be very compassionate for other people, but when it comes to ourselves, we hold ourselves to a very different standard. Learning mindfulness and mindful awareness can be huge in helping you to recognize when you're starting to drift into patterns of ruminating about the future or the past and how to keep you more oriented in the present moment 
and you've got to give yourself time to recover. This is going to be a process that's going to take some time and you have to allow yourself that. You have to really learn to practice self-care, really taking care of yourself and finding the things that actually help you to feel better, taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually. And what you want to do is also surround yourself with a supportive and loving support group. People that have your back, that know who you are, that can reflect that to you. You're probably going to want to get into some form of personal therapy and maybe even a support group for survivors. You want to really start to understand and explore in that therapeutic process healing attachment wounds and family of origin issues that came up in your relationship because in intimate relationships our attachment stuff is triggered and you might have to address things like conflict avoidance, uh, people pleasing, becoming a rescuer or a fixer and also addressing toxic shame. Eventually you get to the point where you start to rewrite your narrative, especially your narrative about your future and often this involves doing some form of trauma work because surviving a toxic relationship often involves psychological trauma, emotional trauma, and sometimes physical trauma. And all of this work is in the service of recovering your sense of yourself, of who you are. And in that process, as you continue to recover, you need to learn how to trust your intuition. Many people don't trust their intuition and, and frankly, they probably shouldn't if they're so confused about it and if they can't tell the difference between their thoughts and their intuition, they may have to do some trauma recovery work before they can get to the point where their intuition is something that they can trust. And eventually, this whole process means moving from thriving to surviving and creating a life that you love. It's absolutely possible to overcome this kind of trauma it's often a long and arduous journey, but it's absolutely worth it. And you can recover yourself even after going through the most toxic relationship. I hope the videos are helpful. And if so, I encourage you to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell so we can send you notifications of when new material comes out. And always look forward to hearing comments and hearing what you might like to hear about. So until next time, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.